All right, well, we're there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. What I want to do this morning is just go through 1 Thessalonians verse by verse and let's just see what Paul had for the church of Thessalonians. Let's learn what Paul had to say. <clears throat> and it's in verse 1, we'll start reading. It says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So right off the bat, I want to notice that Paul's not the only one writing this uh, letter. It's also Paul. It's also Savanus and Timotheus. And Savanus and Timotheus, a lot of times, were Paul's right hand man. They was always with Paul, doing the work of God, and especially Timotheus. You know, throughout the scriptures, you'll see that Timothy, that Paul would send Timothy to different churches, different locations to help exhort and to help establish churches. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19, it says, For the Son of God, G Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. So we see again, Silvanus and Timotheus with Paul. You know, even in the second letter of the Corinthians, we see Silvanus and uh, Timotheus named preaching with Paul. And Paul was always sending Timothy to different places, different locations. You see that throughout Scripture. That's why I believe Timothy was actually an evangelist that did the same work Paul did. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, it says, For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus. So this is Paul again, talking about sending Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Same thing Timothy did. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. So he's saying that he may be with you without fear, meaning that don't be scared he's going to mess something up. He's going to do the same thing I would do. He said, for he worketh the, Lord, the work of the Lord as I do also. So we see the first letter to the Thessalonians is not just written by Paul, but it's written by other men of God also, Silvanus and Timotheus. Uh, look at verse 2. It says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. So Paul is addressing the church and saying, we are praying for you all. He says, we know the work that you've been doing. We know the labor of love you have put forth and the patience and the, and the love you have demonstrated. He says, we just want you to know that we're praying for you and we're thankful for the things that you're doing. Paul was a, Paul was a good prayer warrior. You see this throughout Scripture. Paul was always praying for other people. Yeah. At the yeah. end of all his epistles, he's listing names. Yep. Tons of names. And he remembers all them names. In uh, 1 Timothy 1.8 it says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with the Spirit and the Gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. So even the church in Rome, Paul prayed for the church in Rome. You know, as Christians and men and women of God, we need to be a good prayer warrior like Paul. We need to keep others in mind. We need to keep our friends, our uh, even other churches in mind to be praying for them. You know, prayer has power. God wants us to bring the things that we deal with to Him in prayer. You know, things that we need, things that we're thankful for. He wants us to bring these things to Him. You know, prayer is how we speak to God. Yes. Right? And the Word of God is how God speaks to us. You know, don't let a gay day go by where you're not speaking with the Creator. You know, we should follow Paul's example and keep other churches, not just our church, but other churches that are like mine and other Christians in our prayers. Even Job, in chapter 22, referring to praying to God, he says, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. He shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. So he's talking about lifting your prayers up to God. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, 
and the light shall shine upon thy way. So even Job is saying that we should pray to God and bring our decrees to him and the Lord will bless us. The Lord will answer them requests that we have for him. You're there in verse 5. <clears throat> it says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. So Paul's saying, you know, you know the gospel and the power in which we showed you. And the life that we lived among you, demonstrating the gospel out. And he says, and because of that, you became followers of me. You became followers of us. You know, even though you don't think about it, people are watching you. That's right. Especially when you're claiming the name of Christ. People has their eyes. They might not say nothing to you, oh, but yeah, they're watching. They're, watching. Yeah. They're, they're seeing what you're doing, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and they are watching you and how you live your lives. You know, they're, they're looking for something you're going to mess up on or just how you're going to react in certain situations. You know, if you claim the name of Christ and you're living in a hypo hypocritical way, a hypocritical lifestyle, that can hinder the cause of Christ. That can turn people away from accepting the gospel. You know, we see this church in Thessalonia sees Paul's life, heard his message, believed his message, and they followed him. They had seen his lifestyle, and they followed his lifestyle. Paul was a good example unto this church. Look at verse 7. It says, So, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. So they see Paul's example. Paul came preaching the gospel. They got saved. They see Paul work out his faith. They see Paul live a righteous life. So they follow Paul's examples. And then it says in verse 7, So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. So because of this church followed Paul and how he lived, they were also an example to other people, to other churches. Look at verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God were to spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. So because this church learned Paul's ways and learned the word of God from Paul and applied that to their life, they was able to be an example to other churches and to other Christians. You know, Law of Liberty Baptist Church, we should live our lives according to the Bible. And we can be an example to other churches that watch us. There's people watching us, seeing if we're going to fall, seeing if we're going to fall out, seeing if we're going to quit. You know, we need to keep in mind as an individual and as a church that what we do and how we carry ourselves can be an example to other churches and other people. You know, when other churches and other people are closing churches down, not going so winning because of a pandemic, right, we can be a church that stands in the gap. We can be a church that leads by example and stays soul winning. Stays showing up the church. Stays doing the work of God. <clears throat> Look at verse 9. <clears throat> it says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So we see this church was... Way, from, way away from God. They were serving idols. And Paul came and preached the gospel and they got saved. Verse 10, And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Look, at, we're going to just continue. Chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> it says, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. So he's saying, what we've done, what you've seen us do, it, was for nothing. it wasn't for nothing. Yeah. Verse 2, But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. So Paul is saying, even though we suffered for preaching the gospel, we were still bold in to keep preaching. That didn't stop us. And you know that because we came to you to preach the gospel with contention. Because remember, these people were following idols. You know, that was going against everything they believed. You know, when you go out so winning and you preach the gospel, there's going to be contention. Oh, yeah. You know, when you get mocked, people are going to yell at you. You just got to keep going with boldness and realizing that there's going to be contention because you're out there telling people what they believe is wrong 
Yes. And they're on the way to hell for believing that. There's going to be some contention there. Yeah. But you can't, you, you just got to be honest. You know, you got to be honest when you're out preaching the truth of the gospel and telling people they're on their way to hell. And you just got to love them and just realize that this contention will come and you just can't let it, you can't let it bother you. Just like Paul. He says you need to preach with boldness. <clears throat> Look at verse 3. For, I, for our exhortation was not of the sea, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. Paul's saying we didn't come to deceive you. We came here to tell the truth. Verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God with trieth our hearts. I love this verse because it says that God put the gospel in our trust. You know, God expects us to preach the gospel. God trusts that with this knowledge of the gospel that we have, that we're going to take it and we're going to use it. And He expects us to do that. You know, not worrying about what people are going to think or pleasing men, just like Paul says, not as pleasing men. But we should do it to please God with boldness, with confidence that God's behind us. Paul is saying, I didn't come to deceive you, but to preach the truth. Look at verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. <clears throat> he says, For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. He's saying we don't care what people think. We're not seeking man's glory. There you go. Right? We're not seeking men's glory. We care what the Lord thinks. We want the Lord's blessing upon our lives. And we just see what the Bible says, and we just do it. I don't care what people say. Look at verse 7. <clears throat> but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desire of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. So we're going to see kind of a change in his mentality. First, it's just standing up and preaching the gospel of boldness. Now it's actually investing time into others. Because he says, um, verse 8, We were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls. That's giving your heart to others. <clears throat> because ye were dear unto us. Look at verse 9. Verse 9, it reads, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preach unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. So again, we see just the, the discipline of Paul. The discipline of Paul, just how he conducted himself, how he character. Uh, carried himself amongst other Christians. Look at verse 11. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. So not only do I believe Paul got these people saved, I believe Paul invested time and discipled them and showed them how to follow Christ. Right. You know, we need to make this a goal and a priority in our Christian walk, in our Christian life. And I know it's hard. But not only to get people saved, but take time and invest time into other people and show them how to follow Christ. Show them to do what we do. Amen. Getting people saved, coming to church, reading the Bible, you know, things like that. Ver look at verse 13. <clears throat> For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. There we go with Paul's praying again. He's always praying. <laughs> Right? Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. Now remember, these people were mixed up in idols. Yeah. And they, they heard the power, of, they seen the boldness of Paul, and they heard the power of the word of God, and they, they had a humble heart. They couldn't resist it. It says, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So Paul's saying... That he thanks God because when he came and preached unto them, 
they was humble and meek enough that they received the word of God. Not as the word of men, but as it was the word of the living God. Look at verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So remember again, be an example to other churches. Even the church in Thessalonians was uh, following the churches of God that was in Judea also. So those churches in Judea was an example to the church in Thessalonians also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it all comes together under Christ. Amen. Look at verse 15. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us, verse 16, to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. So Paul's telling them that he knows that they have been through some trying times. Yeah. You know, and their own countrymen has persecuted them, just like the Jews did to their countrymen, trying to prevent them from preaching the gospel to other people. But the people that tried to stop that try to stop the gospel of God, God's going to bring wrath upon them. Yeah. Woe unto them. You know, here's something we have to keep in mind is no matter what happens, God is always going to have a door open. Amen. to preach the gospel he's always going to have a door open you just got to walk through that door right you just got to be bold and walk through that door because in order for the end times to even come the gospel's got to be preached to the whole world so that tells me that no matter what happens in this life if we don't if we don't see jesus here yet it's time to preach if jesus ain't here yet it's time to preach and that means there's going to be doors there's going to be opportunity there's going to be ways to do that because that's god's will you know it's a virus is not going to stop the preaching of God. Amen. It's just not going to do it. You know? Verse 17. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. So we see by this verse too, just how much Paul really cared for people. Because he says, But we, brethren, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, but not in heart. So even though we're away from you, he's saying you're still in our heart. We're still thinking about you. We're still praying for you. Endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once, again, once and again, but Satan hindered us. So obviously he was going to come, but there was something that happened where the devil just didn't allow him. But guess what? He's writing a letter to him, right? Yeah. So they're still getting what he wanted to tell them. Because Paul, Paul wasn't a quitter. Paul wasn't going to give up. He had, he, when he got a vision in mind, when he had a place he wanted to go or something to say, whether he was writing a letter or whether he had to go through the swamp or whatever, he was going to get there and he was yeah. going to do what he was wanted to do. Verse 19, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? For ye are our glory and joy. So Paul's writing them, telling them that even though he's not with them, they're still in his heart, and he's praying continually for them, that they can continue in the things of God. And that by them continuing in the fight, that that's his crown of rejoicing. That's his reward by seeing that. Yeah. You know, it's a good reward when you can actually go get somebody saved, invest time, develop a friendship with them, and then watch them grow in the Lord and watch them grow uh disciple them and watch them get people saved and do likewise you know right. you're never going to get no joy like that until that happens to you right. we're going to just keep keep reading verse uh, chapter 3 verse 1 <clears throat> wherefore when we could no longer forbear we thought it good to be left at athens alone and sent timotheus our brother so we see again Timotheus was a hard worker. You know, he was always doing what Paul asked him to do. Paul asked him to go somewhere, he was ready to pack up and go. <clears throat> a minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So even though Paul couldn't make it there himself because Satan hindered him, he was sending somebody else through the back door. Right? He was going to go around Satan and he was going to get somebody there to exhort these brethren. Look at verse 3. 
that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we were appointed thereunto. So they was preaching the gospel. They learned Paul's ways. They, they seen Paul's life, how he lived it, and they started applying that to their, to their lives. They're preaching the gospel, living the righteous life. And then, of their own countrymen, they started receiving affliction. Right? And Paul knew this. So Paul didn't want them to get discouraged. So Paul was sending Timothy to exhort them. He says that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. So even in our time, right now, it should be no surprise when you're serving God and you're going to church and you're pre preaching the gospel that there's not going to be afflictions. You know, it's written that we're appointed to afflictions. We're appointed to tribulations. Look at verse 4. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. So this little virus that's going around now that's hindering people from going out, hindering people coming to church, this is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the end times. Yes. Nothing. Verse 5. Yeah. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to you to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Look at verse 6. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, he brought us good tidings of your faith and charity. So another example of Timothy just traveling. He goes there, and then he's bringing word back to Paul. And he said he's bringing good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. So he went there, and the Thessalonians were doing what Paul wanted them to do. They were standing strong. He got a good report. They wasn't quitting. They was continuing in the things of God. And we'll just keep reading there. <clears throat> oh, one more second. Chapter 4. Oh no. Verse 7, sorry. Just jumping ahead. Okay. <laughs> Verse 7. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and distress by your faith. So, Paul sent Timothy to exhort this church, to comfort this church because they was going through affliction. Then he got word back that this church is good. Their charity is strong. Their fight is strong. Their work is good. And it comfort him by hearing this because that was his discipling that he was doing. And it was paying off. So that was a good rejoicing and reward for him. Verse 8. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your face. So continually trying to improve these people. Continually trying to get these people to walk with the Lord as He does. You know, we need to, yeah. we need to be praying for God to lead us to those that want to learn. Right? Because if the people don't want to learn, it's going to be hard to disciple them people. Right? And when we find that person, we need to just stay on them. Give them a hard time when they're getting down. You know, when they're slacking. Yeah. Like, like uh, Brother Zach, I stay on his butt, he stays on my butt. But it helps, we help each other out. <clears throat> verse 10 or verse 11 now God himself and our father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints so the things we can take away from what we read is Paul was a prayer warrior. We need to be a prayer warrior. We yeah. need to bring our decrees to God, our concerns, all the struggles that we're going through. We need to pray to God. We need to continue in that prayer. You know, stay strong, preaching the gospel. Find somebody to invest time and disciples, disciple them, and God will bless that. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for the book of Thessalonians. 
Father, I just think we can read your word as a congregation and we can just, on the surface,